Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cabinet Maker Profit System podcast. I'm trying to make you money here, folks. I'm trying to keep things simple. I'm trying to take the stress out of your life. I'm trying to make your business boring, dead boring. Take the drama out of it. Well, today we got a guest, Chris Manises. Some of you have already met Chris through me. Uh, he's actually my tech guy. And today I've got him here talking to us about how to accept technology and finally make it work for you. If you're resisting technology or if you're stuck, you know, let's say that your business is doing, I'm going to choose a random number here. Let's say you're doing $800,000 in cabinetry and woodwork a year, right? So nice, great size business. You know, you definitely have a lot of growth potential at 800 grand. You've got the world to grow, but you've already come through a lot of tough times. Let's say you're there and you're like, well, what do I need to do next? And why is, why are things starting to fall apart? And why are we losing track of things? We should be able to run things, but it's harder to run it at 800 grand than it was at 500 grand. And I'll tell you the reason. And at this, this reason doesn't matter what size company you're at. The reason you're having troubles at 800 grand is because you're still running it as if you're a $600,000 business and you're bursting at the seams. So the systems, the simple systems that used to work for you at 600 grand don't work at 800 grand. Again, if you're at $6 million, if you're at $8 million a year and you're wondering why you're falling apart at the seams, it's because you're still running it as a $6 million business. That's an indicator. It's an indicator of success, actually, because you're already, you've already proven that you can get to the edge of what's possible with everything you've done, but now you're stuck. And so you need new inputs. You need new information. So you go look for a podcast like this. Congratulations. Here you are. That's what Chris is going to talk to us today. So if you find yourself frustrated, you're losing business to competitors, you can't grow the company. Every time you take two steps forward, you take one step back. Technology now has to enter the picture because it's a force multiplier. It's a lever, right? It's going to help you do more with less. Now, yes, I understand there are problems putting new technology in place. And actually, I don't even care which technology you put in place. How crazy is that? I just want you to be the kind of company that embraces technology to use it as a tool to move yourself forward. That's what Chris is going to talk to us about today. So let's get to the episode. We'll see you on the other side. Mr. Chris Manesis, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Dominic? I'm really good. This is a unique experience for me because for people <laughs> who are watching this as a video, I'm. this is great. I could see you in your truck or is that your car? Where are we? It, it, it's, uh, it's my car. It's actually a new car I got. It's an A4. Oh, that is a pretty nice new car. You got yeah. boxing gloves hanging from the mirror. You're Mr. Technology. You got, you got it. I don't think we've ever done an interview from somebody's vehicle before. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened um, really quickly. Uh, I have a Doberman. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Doberman, they're known for having their ears up. Right. Yeah. Now, to get those ears is banned in a lot of provinces, Places. Quebec That's being right. one. I had to drive five hours to get her ears done today, which is why I'm on the road today. Ah, I see. I mean, I mean, I'm in Toronto. There's a few places that do them in Toronto. So she's, you know, I've been babying her all day. She's great. I'll send you pictures later. <laughs> yeah. Send them. Yeah. We'll put them on the, the channel so people can see your dome. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So today you're here though, is because you're, you're a tech expert. I've referred you a bunch of guys in the cabinetry industry. And today right. you and I are here to talk about how to accept technology, whether you sell business to consumer or business to business, because we've got commercial guys listening. We got, uh, you know, people that sell more residential. So yes. let me let me start with this, Chris. You know this question. Christopher <laughs> Manises, who the heck are you? And how is it you come to be speaking to all these cabinet makers all around the world? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, my name is Chris Manises. Um, my, I help businesses develop or, or have a mindset and a holistic approach to technology mm-hmm. and automation, uh, especially businesses that are matured you know uh Mm -hmm. that that they're not new business new industries they're businesses that have been around for many years right um so they tend to take uh or like to give a little bit of pushback to automation to technology to you know different ways of doing things and as a result sometimes the competition uh smokes them (laughs) 
I'm just sorry. Because- it's funny. We laughed, but it's funny, painful, funny, not funny, funny. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, typically I, I, I come across somebody that uh, realizes what's going on, realizes that there is a, uh, a need for technology to be able to keep up with demand. Uh, the expectation of customer service now, because customers want to be able to text and email and get out of replies and they want everything right away. It's a la carte. Yeah. It's not like I'm going to write you a letter and send it in the mail, wait two weeks and come <laughs> For it back. To come back. Yeah. No, I mean, look at what's happening with Skip the Dishes and Uber Eats and DoorDash and all these other right. food companies. It's changed the culture of what people think. They just, I just want, I want it instantly. And so when they call their cabinet maker or their architectural supplier, right, they're just used to that. Exactly. And, and like, you know, I don't know, back in the day, for example, to have drawings of particular things, um, spaces at your house, for example, um, things will be sent by fax or somebody would have to come in. Now it's you have your phone, which has 4K or 1080p. You can take a picture of that yeah. in real time to have measurements so you can get quotes instantly. Uh, and, uh, and the speed to lead um has increased drastically right so not accepting technology is it's a difference between somebody who wants to do business today at, at three o'clock in the morning and is looking for a quote yeah and you don't have an automated system to provide a quote that might not be accurate but it's still a quote close. yeah it's close then somebody who's just has a contact form and we'll get back to you within 24 or 48 hours and yeah so does that me, make sense? It, it makes sense to me because, well, you yeah. and I have spoken and I've introduced you yeah. to other wood shops who've recognized this. But let me let me paint a different picture for a second. So, Chris, I'm not going to speak to you now. I'm going to speak to the listeners directly. Right. If you're listening to the show and you're the owner of a cabinetry shop for custom furniture maker, whatever, we're, we're dealing in wood, right? We take big pieces of wood, we cut them into smaller pieces, we mark them up and we sell them to people. If you're in that business, if you're feeling frustrated because you're losing bids and jobs to the other guys across the street and you don't know how they're still in business. It's because they found efficiencies that you or I haven't found yet. That's just the answer, right? Are they getting their products cheaper? Probably not. Are they using a fancier CNC? Probably not. Their systems and their processes are better. And so we can yell and swear at them under our breath for the rest of our lives, but They're still winning business and still open. And you're shaking your head wondering why. The reason why is they found efficiencies. What Chris is an expert in is technological efficiencies, making software talk to each other, uh, making software work for the way you run your business. Am I on track here, Chris? 100%. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll do the interview then. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I've just seen you do it. I've seen you do it. And, 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 And it's come to the point where... I, I realize it, it's frustrating because in the old days, you could do everything yourself. These days, you can't. You can't even change the oil in your own car anymore. You need a special tool to remove the cowling if you can even figure out how to open the hood. Yeah. And we're still talking right. about gas engines there, I guess. But you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. it, the, the tech world, you might as well pay for the expertise to get somebody to do it right and do it the first time. Exactly. Yeah. Pay all the money, expect all the results. <laughs> but but make sure you have a proper vetting process because there's some people, there's a lot of gurus out there. But yeah, if, you know, pay all the money, expect all the results. And uh, yeah, you're right. You know, it's technology. There's so much. There's here's what you get with consultants because if you don't get somebody that knows what they're doing, mm-hmm. uh, you might have what's called analysis paralysis because there is an abundance of systems and and you say hey I, I need an email marketing solution and you google email marketing solution there's hundreds and thousands <laughs> yeah right um so yeah. when you have a niche specific consultant especially in the technology space that can help you hey well you know what this technology here let's look at your current ecosystem and make sure that everything talks to each other so if you want something that um like a system where your employees can clock in hours and that talks, that talks to QuickBooks and then that talks to 
Oh, you're the, the, you're dripping sweet client. honey on people's ears right now, Chris. That you're dripping <laughs> sweet honey. If I could have right. a system that integrated everything without having to buy a big, they're called ERPs, as you and I know, yeah. enterprise resource planning systems. But those are only for companies right. already doing ten million. Those are like for the big, big companies. Yeah, big, Microsoft big. Dynamics is probably the the yeah, leading. Yeah, there's Energy, That's there's Crow's Nest, there's Dynamics, there's custom building your own software, which I have a. I don't know how you feel about custom software. I got a thing against it. Yeah, me too. But okay, sorry. Well, that was close. We almost ended the interview right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me. No, I completely let me, agree. Let me go back up. I'm going to take us thirty thousand feet. Do you commonly encounter resistance to technology? In what you do, even though people call you and say, "Hey, show me tech," do you still get resistance to technology? Uh, and no, everybody loves the technology. They just don't like the they they haven't been able to cost justify spending the mm -hmm. money on, on on things. And when I tell you, okay, well, you as a business owner, how much time are you uh, spending doing data entry? double entries like you you might have you might be doing the same information on an invoicing software and then writing the exact same information on quickbooks and, or or whatever accounting software you have and you have all these three things these three systems you're using and you're writing the exact same thing um, yeah even data ship the thing on all of them yeah exactly so here's a solution it's it's high cost up front but low maintenance and it will last you forever. You spend money once and then you sell it many times. Mm. And that's going to help you zero, zero in on your strengths. You get, you get off of the, you know, the low skill tasks that are time consuming that you could probably outsource them or even automate them. And you as a business owner can focus on the, on the high ticket decisions and just like, you know, get rid of a lot of uh, the white yeah. noise. <laughs> He's speaking of white noise, Chris, for those of you listening, wondering what that chirping is in the background is actually a bird because it's springtime where Chris and I are. And that's a, oh, yeah. I think it's a sparrow or a chickadee or something. So if yeah. you're adjusting your audio while you're listening to this, don't, it's just the sweet sounds of spring. That's all. It's great coming to you <laughs> from the beautiful mother nature. Yeah. Hey, you've been able <laughs> to, birds. let's, let's do, let's do this for a second. I want to step away from woodworking and talk oh, about right. some experiences you've had in other industries. And the reason I want to do that is because this show is about the business of the construction business. Uh, the right. people who listen to this show, they know why they're tuned in because I want to show them how to be a business person who just happens to run a construction company or cabinet company. But you've got experience in other industries. So I want you to, for a second, tell us about a success story in another industry. I'm sure you can come up with one. And and I want people to see how the business case works, no matter what it is. So do you have another industry that you've done a lot of work in? Yeah, I used to do shower enclosures uh, and, and automotive <laughs> as well. <laughs> okay, shower enclosures and automotive. That's a wacky combo. Okay, choose one of those and tell us a before and after story. If you don't shower enclosures, are you kidding me? Yeah. Dude, that's more specific. People make fun of me for my show. you got a podcast called Cabinet Maker Profit System? But yeah. okay. Lead on, sir. <laughs> you are in charge. Well, look, uh, the, the reason why I'm bringing up shower enclosures is is to... Um, I'm still laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was somebody who would come in and they had to physically drive to location and do all these um, confusing drawings of the showers. And I just had a system where I would actually take a picture with my phone and I had an app that I would just write it like overlay it on the on the actual picture so you can get a real image mm. of of that and at the same time i had a it was a high-rise building and what i did i created a spreadsheet and, and on the spreadsheet i had hyperlinks with and every hyperlink it, it would open um the unit every unit of every apartment right uh, it's, it's kind of confusing but the no i can just, I, I can see what you're doing you're putting a system you're systematizing something that's random yeah you know, because it's a different application every shower looks different even though it's the same building right if different summer it, tiles it, summer exactly. enclosures, right yeah so i had just very automated uh and, and what happened was i created a template so that way i just you know rinse and repeat with the all the other ones 
And what was the because, business case you were trying to solve here with the uh, the shower enclosure? Uh, what were you trying to do? Do estimates faster or do uh, send uh, manufacturing better so, plans? So when I went from getting paid by the hour to getting piecework, I was like, okay, well, I don't need to take stretch out all my time because <laughs> I can do I can cut my time in half. I just have to sit down and do it properly. Uh, so what is it that I do? Preparation. Okay. And is it the same here? Is it the same system everywhere? And how many? Eliminating wastes. Uh, yeah. You're eliminating yeah. waste. Just cutting out the fat. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah. Anyway, that was a, a, a case study that just started telling me about technology um, and how effective it is. And even in the service industry, not, not selling, but just in fulfillment. Because mm. it, it I was able to cut costs in half or, or, or just my time in half right right uh and then wow. what you do when you have more time is you can take on more business or you can have more like work-life balance right I, started, I was taking more business right what happened was uh the shower enclosures those big panels of glass is heavy work i end up uh, getting a herniated disc which i was uh i couldn't work for six months and i had to start learning other skills which got me into sales yeah. um and software, but, uh, but you've always been a tech guy. I understand uh, yeah, you've got always. some cool before and after stories about the automotive industry as well. Yes. <laughs> so that's crazy. Now, and remember, everybody <laughs> listening, please remember, we're intentionally not talking about cabinetry. Because I want you to understand, like you just heard a little case study from Chris there on shower enclosures. Well, tell us, yeah. tell us some of the wow things you've done in the world of automotive marketing. Okay, well, here's a, here's a funny story. When I when I hurt my back in the doing the construction thing, my, my dream was to, to do acting. It's a passion of mine to do theater. And you see, you saw. I've seen your videos. videos yeah, you'll have to tell us how to find them later. <laughs> uh, I, I end up landing at the commercial for a Toyota dealership. So I go in and, and I play a car salesman, and I, and it was like three hundred dollars they pay me for the day, just, you know, standard. And I asked the guy like, hey, um. So the guys that are actually doing this job, how much are they making? And the one person there said, you know, they're making 150, 200 K a year. I was like, wow, how do I get into that? <laughs> it's like, well, you know, I, I know a couple of used car dealers and there's actually this one guy who has a, a luxury car dealership and they're just looking for a, for a junior person, you mm -hmm. know, to, to show cars, go and test drive this and that. Right. Uh, anyway, I said, Sure, like, can I talk to them? But I don't know anything about cars. Like, I'm from Costa Rica. I grew up with horses. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I still, um, I landed at that interview. Anyway, lo and behold, uh, long story short, um, within three months of working there, I was able to identify what was missing. Mm. And I'm a huge fan of Grant Cardone. I did Gary V. I, I did the Straight Line Persuasion. And I noticed that the guys were not taking massive action. They were mm. just working. They were working very reactively, not proactively. Mm. So they were waiting on the phone to ring. They were waiting on people to come in. <laughs> so when I went there and I said, what's going on here? Like, this guys just go out for smokes and yeah. they're not doing it. So I'm like, do we have we have had any leads that, that we haven't been working on or whatever? Anyway, we didn't have a CRM. We were working off spreadsheets and emails. Hold on, and, Chris. What's uh, a, can, can you back us up for just a second? Right. What is a CRM for people is, that don't know it? Because a CRM is not entirely common in okay. the woodworking industry. Can you tell us what that is in like 30 seconds or less? Yeah, it's a customer relationship management system. Okay. It's like a Excel sheet on steroids. <laughs> right. But and, right. and that's where you track customer name, address, phone, conversions, uh, and con most importantly, activities. Oh, okay. Okay. So the, the communication and you want to have a multi-channel CRM. So that way your text messages, emails, and phone calls get logged all in the same spot. That way you can monitor what your staff is doing and you can say, okay, so-and-so it's getting is making this amount of calls, is sending this amount of emails, this amount of text messages, and they're converting right. better. So you could track so, your designer's activity out to right, homeowners right. or your, your estimator's activity out to uh, GCs, whatever you're doing. You can track that. And then you have some predictability in your business in the future to know Correct. how much business is coming. Is it the right business? 
are we buying the right products? Are we buying the right consumables, adhesives and braces? So, like you just start to know more about your business because you've got data. You're not going by your gut. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You, you can you can sit back, look at the numbers. Numbers don't lie. And you can say, okay, if we spend money on Google and Facebook and newspaper, we can track what's giving us the best conversion. Mm. We can track which employee is giving us more the most reviews is generating their own leads and referrals it's getting um, more conversions and yeah. who's not really doing well so we can track those things and if you're in the mortgage industry financial industry you know you know, and you buying leads for example for for sales and this is this might not apply to to well, your it audience does. but no it does it because yeah. we can farm an area we could choose a very affluent part of town and we could buy a list we could go to a home show and get a bunch of names. We could have a list of GCs we've done business with before or want to do business with and create a list. And once you have that list, that's when a guy like you, Chris, starts to really shine because you're like, okay, you roll up your <laughs> sleeves. You're like, watch this, boys, because you know how to make that list come to life, right? Exactly. Yeah. You, you, you're you able to identify even from your employees who, call, you know, we're humans at the end of the day. And as much as people like to think we're all equal, Hey, you might be able to close certain people, a certain age, certain gender better than some other person. And that's perfectly fine. Right. The data will tell you, right? Um, uh, what was the last thing you said? Sorry. Well, I was talking about converting from lists, right? I actually right. took you off the, I took you off your game when I asked you what a CRM was and you were saying people weren't taking massive action when you were in, in the car dealership. And so I was asking you, what actions did you take at the dealership and what results did the dealership see? And of course, everything's confidential. Please don't mention the name of the dealership or, right, or any right. of the other people I've referred you to, but use case studies. Like how did it, how did it work? Perfect. And this actually ties into uh, to the data and, uh, and uh, <clears throat> data list that you just mentioned. Yeah. So taking massive action is thinking at scale, you know, people like, the old school car sales, for example, they will just get a, a spreadsheet or Excel sheet and dial numbers one by one. They don't know what a phone dialer is, a power dialer that can dial a hundred call, a hundred numbers an, an hour. You know, three, three outbound calls at the same time. You know, they don't know about uh, email journeys, mm -hmm. cold email. What I got a my message, I guess, one of the biggest takeaways that, that I want to give your audience is if you have data, um, save it and learn how to farm and nurture your data. If you have data, data you have the power. You have the data, you have the power. Not only if you're looking to get acquired, that would help you mm -hmm. to have the data. If you're looking to expand, um, scale, bring investors into your business, or let's just say legislation or advertising laws change and you can't advertise how it used to, you have the good data there. Let's, you let's have, drill you have, that down. Let's drill that down, Chris. So let's, let's use the example, uh, a residential kitchen cabinet manufacturing company. They do custom kitchen cabinets. They have a couple of designers, which is salespeople. They, they do sales and they draw, they make beautiful kitchens that fit the need of the person, but their job is to convert that raw lead into a, a job uh, at the shop. So we buy a list from an affluent neighborhood. And we all, we've all heard of list buying before you get the name and address, but is it possible? This is a side question. Is it possible to buy a list of names with phone numbers and cell phone numbers? Yes. Okay. So now we've got a list of cell phone numbers from people in affluent areas or people in our city who are in a certain income bracket. Let's say we know they do, they make over $250,000 a year. Some of you are right. choking on your coffee right now. And that's a real list that you can buy <laughs> in any city you're in. If I put that list in your hands, Chris, and I said, I need to sell more kitchen cabinets, high end, tell me a couple of paths you would take. I can see your eyes are already going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at, you should see Chris's <laughs> face right now. I'm like salivating He's right like, now. He's like, let me add it. That's my list. Yeah, that's that's my expertise. You know, a lot of uh, people in this space, they're all about lead generating. But that's not what I got good at. I mean, I'm, I'm good at lead generating, but I'm good at going into a business and say, how many leads you have from the past? Or if you bought a database yeah. like that one, how warm is it? Or is it warm at all? Is it just cold? Yeah. You, have to, you have to understand that if it's just a cold 
database. You cannot use something like MailChimp or Constant Contact because they're not opt-in leads. Yeah. They haven't opt-in for you. They haven't asked for the information to be sent to them. So then exactly. you get marked as spam and none of your mail gets through. And this is why email warm-up is very important. Mm-hmm. And that the workaround for that is you have to have a domain similar to the main domain yeah. Right. And you have to buy email addresses and you can have support at uh, sales at whatever have Google lets you send two to 300 emails per email address. And you have to warm up that email. Um, it, you can go up 10, 20 emails per week and you keep getting higher and sending higher and higher amount of emails a day. So what I would do, you give me that list. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit of work, but what happens is people that have done this have, Lots of warm emails that are warmed up already. Yeah. Right. So, so let's just w- go back to that case scenario. You said you have a list. It has a hundred thousand leads, mm-hmm. right? I'll, I'll try to uh, create lists of segmented and lists of 5,000, 5,000 each. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the first thing I would do is I will find a common denominator. So it could be a po- uh, phone code, you know, yeah, area or code. zip code. Or yeah. zip code, yeah, yeah, um, whatever it is, narrow it down to lists of five thousand. That five thousand list is an email campaign. Mm. Then what I'll do is I use a cleanup tool and a um, carrier. These are, look, these are all software tools that Chris knows about. That you would you would show an owner how to do this. No, people normal people them. don't know this stuff, Chris. You know that, right? Yeah, this, I, I get this it. is not a normal people conversation. I'm just <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that out there. Yeah. And this is uh, a specific, look, if, if these are leads that are coming to your website, it's a different story, but these are not opt-in leads. This is data, yeah. cold data, right? Yeah. So what you would do is, so you have 100,000, uh, make them in list of 5,000. The list of 5,000, you want to do different tools. Number one, um, email lookup tools. Uh, and I don't know the exact name for it, but it basically checks for um, generic email addresses, uh, email addresses that look fake and it remove, uh, it's called list cleanup tool. Right. Right. And that will take away, usually for me, it takes away like 20% of the, of the emails I have, because it will be just gibberish. Somebody just put gibberish on that yeah. email address. Yeah. Why do you want to take those off? Because if you send emails to those incorrect addresses, Google knows you're sending spam and you get penalized for that. And then yeah. What does that mean? Getting penalized? It means your other emails will end up in, in junk mail. You don't want to end up in junk mail. Email developability mm. is a huge priority, right? Okay, so Take we did it. Yeah. yeah. So we did our list cleanup tool. Yeah. Right. So out of the 5,000, let's just say that cleaned up 1,000. So we're left with 400. Then we have another tool, which is called a carrier carrier lookup tool which tells us that if the numbers are valid right because there's a lot of numbers that might be bogus or, or how oh, no like carriers. four five six seven eight nine one two three is their phone number one two three right. four yeah yeah or it could be like text mail this you know or apps mm-hmm. with, with fake text oh, messaging you yeah know? that's right yeah so if it's one of those it will take them out so then you're left with three thousand out of the five thousand Mm-hmm. That 3,000, what you do now is you can use a system like Jasper or Shakespeare, or, if, you are in, or if, if you're a good email copywriter yourself, you can write your emails. Obviously, English is my second language, so I use the, the uh, AI to help AI. Me, yeah. Right? I don't know if you use it, but it's amazing. You write three, four sentences, it drafts out a beautiful well-written email for you. Okay. Yeah. So that one's called Jasper, Jasper.ai. It's a... Chris, what is Jasper.ai? What does it do instead of me answering it? It's a um, artificial intelligence email copywriter. <laughs> and you work with, and the way it works is you give it the name of your business. You give um, some, t- uh, de- depending on what it is that you're looking for, because Jasper writes for everything, whether it's a caption of a Facebook post, mm-hmm. or Instagram post, a video description on YouTube, a blog, a text. Yeah subject so in this context we're using it for cold email the reason for cold email it's going to ask you for the name of the business mm-hmm. 
in three sentences of what it is that you're talking about. And you write a very brief, whatever comes to mind, and Jasper will then craft a beautiful uh, SEO, well-designed email that is actually, that works well with Google, that doesn't have any verbiage that can flag it for spam. Yeah, I think right, right now people are, are shaking their heads. There's a lot of people going, <laughs> I can't believe this exists. But these are the oh, kind of tools beautiful. you walk people through when you ask them questions about their company. You know, we're going down one specific path where we bought a list. But you come, you come at this from a million angles and then you say, oh, you have you, to. these are the tools to, you stack this tool on this tool on this tool on this tool. And then suddenly, yeah. you know, Jasper AI makes sense. Hundred percent. It's crazy because it writes content for you. I actually don't use it, believe it or not. I have a human writer who takes my writing and shortens it or lengthens it because you know some posts have to be longer, some have to be shorter. But right. I'm I'm a little afraid of of those auto generated artificial intelligence content writers because I, I worry that they don't they're not real. You know, I want it to be the words right. or the tips that I give. But it, hey, technology you'd, you'd be surprised. It just enhances the sent the, the paragraphs that you, you write with Jeez. more colorful words and it just makes it sound really nice and basically what you do okay so now we have this vetted list if we started with five thousand we now have three thousand we have an email and obviously because we can't blast five three thousand emails at the time we have to use our email i, I like to use one called mailchimp sorry uh mail shake which is, 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 it works with your email domain, right? So <clears throat> anyway, you can only send 200 emails at a time uh, per day. So you test it. Is what you're doing is testing the validity? Right. So if we have this one campaign and we send that campaign 200 emails a day, uh, we send that nice, beautifully, beautifully crafted email, we send 200 emails a day. And then we make four lists of that. We do that process four times. Mm. Right. So we have four campaigns, four emails. So four times two is eight. So we're sending out 800 emails a day. And now there's a tool called the lead catcher tool. And you can give this lead catcher tool different <laughs> things to look for. Right. So hear me out. <laughs> what, what would be a consider a lead catcher or, or the lead catcher considers a lead. You, you can give us different metrics. So what I do is. If somebody opens my email three times yeah. or clicks on the link in my email, the call to action, or replies to my email, that's considered a lead. So here's what that looks like. Um, we have that list, call list. We vetted it, uh, cleaned it up, and now we're sending 200 emails a day. If you open my email three times, then what we do is we go on Zapier and we create an out of text to go out. Right. So now it's like, oh, I, I opened this guy's email three times. And as soon as I open it the third time, because if you, somebody opens my email three times or they click yeah. on the link, I know they're interested. Somehow they're interested. Yeah. And then they get a text message, which is a little bit more intrusive. Chris, right? I got to tell you, this is all automated. Well, it's automated and yeah. it's something you're very comfortable with, but it's as you know, this is the reason I refer people to you in the cabinetry. <laughs> it really is because there's no right. way that I could recreate this on my own. I mean, okay, I wrote down the word carrier lookup tool. I wrote down list cleanup tool, yeah. but that's never going to be enough. They, there's right. the time. I, I, I Again, I'm going to talk to the audience here. If you're not using outsourced consultants as a business owner, you're missing the boat. You cannot possibly do everything in-house anymore. Chris right. is only talking about buying a cold email list for a specific neighborhood and how to get that to turn into business. He's not talking about how to text people. He's not talking about how to integrate your software. This is all things you do anyways, how to yeah. integrate your software with your QuickBooks and your other things. There's so many specialties that we're just not going to have in house because we hire people in a wood shop that know wood shop stuff. Maybe right. not the bookkeeper, the bookkeeper knows bookkeeping stuff, but you have to look, look outside for these things. And, you know, I've had other experts on here, Chris, people that do 3D modeling, uh, people that do uh, understand real estate transactions. You would never do your own teeth. You go to a dentist. You might right. cut your own hair. Actually, Chris, yours is cut pretty tight. You might, nah, I can tell by that trim beard, you don't do your own beard. But like you go to a hairdresser, <laughs> you go to your own bar, you go to a barber, you don't do it yourself, right? 
Right. It's the same thing with technology. If you want to harness it, you got to buy the experience. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So especially if you want, look, you can do this on your own. The problem is what happens is I spend so much time, trial and error, and there's so many bugs that happen. Hey, things get disconnected. Hey, an email might get flagged. Something might come up. Right. You know, um, there's, and plus there is, um, compliance things as well there's a whole all the discussion on compliance and what's on the d and d list and how do you cross reference um you know what's on the d and d especially if you're in the united states right so in in a in addition to having that list you also have to buy the that area code from the d and d website or the dnc website and cross reference because what happens is uh, if if you call email or call so even call emailing is, is legal, but if you call call cold call or call text somebody mm. who's on the DNC list and they call and complain, DNC you have to worry is about do not that. call list, right? Do not call list. Yeah. Okay. But here's what happens. Um, one person, it's really nothing to worry about. But when somebody calls and complains, the lawyer will pick up that call, right? And they say, Hey, okay, well, listen, if you if we go forward with you right now, nothing's really gonna happen. But we have we just need five more people to really go out on a class action lawsuit because they just gather all these people. So you have to when it comes to compliance, you have to be very, very smart about it. Right. And make sure you have all these checks in place. Yeah. So, we, you know, in addition to doing the list cleanup tool and uh, and the email tool and um, carrier lookup tool, you have to cross reference those numbers to the do not call list as well this is heavy so, stuff this it, it, but it's stuff that you already know because you've already done right? yeah like I've when done you it a million about, times yeah you've done it a million times so when you talk <laughs> about quickbooks integration into production it, you're just right. you're a soft you're you understand how software fits into a business and the places that the, it doesn't because you can waste money uh, if a good sales rep gets on the phone with a business owner they can sell them on the need for uh color matching software and you think exactly. that's the greatest thing ever but you're not moving your business forward. Yeah. You need the things that uh, that answer a business question that you're trying to get unstuck on. And I and Chris, that's where I've always seen you shine. It's that stuff. There you go. Hey, yeah. If, I, uh, if somebody well, wants to get in touch with you, if they want to find out more about how to un get unstuck on technology, maybe it's two partners in a company. One is very tech savvy, and the other one isn't really tech savvy. That's a, another perfect place for you to have that conversation. How do we find you in this big wide world? Yeah, it's just Chris at crmgenius.ca. <laughs> That's easy. That's how many really lists easy. is that? I wonder how many lists you're on. Chris at crmgenius.ca. I love it. Right. Yeah. Hey, how do we find your videos? Those are funny. Uh, I think if you just Google Christopher Manessis. On Christopher YouTube. Manessis on YouTube, uh, on YouTube, you'll find a ton. Like I did music videos i did so many films yeah um yeah it's a small world for so for people listening chris and i you know we only met a couple of years ago but yeah. uh for a while we had a, a student staying with us a friend of the family was staying with us and she was studying film and she was watching this you know i guess a university level film piece on something and I was right. acting interested. I wasn't interested. Like, oh, what are you watching? Oh, <laughs> and it, it was you at this. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Small what world. a small world. Yeah, yeah, what a small world. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what they were talking about in that film. Something about the use of lighting and to instill emotion or what? I don't know. I yeah. honestly, I wasn't even listening to her. Nice girl, didn't care. Whatever. <laughs> Fine. She was Funny. just living with us for a while. Um, Hey, Chris, thank you very much for joining us here. Um, for people listening, um, Chris really, you know, he got into the details here, but if you're going to work with him, he doesn't get it. You know, he, he'll just walk you through. This is what we need to do. This is the output you're looking for. And he, oh, yeah. he walks you. That's the. I'm just, I'm just very passionate about it. That's why I can go into the nitty gritty. There's a million moving parts about this and I've done it. I've done it for gym owners. I've done it for dentists. I've done it for mortgage companies uh, and automotive companies as well. Uh, at the end of the day, if you have data, if you have a book of business and you feel like you're not nurturing it well enough, maybe uh, reach out to Dominic or myself and we'll point you the right directions because you're sitting on a gold mine right now and we can start. 
And by the way, all of these things, I know that I, they sound super complicated and whatever, is very, it's, it's cheaper than buying 10 leads. This, you know, it's if you, if you have most leads, depending on what it is, they're $100 each, depending on what industry, in my, yeah. what, from what I've seen, how, how good the lead is. Each, yeah. Right. My having all these processes that I just mentioned is less than a thousand dollars a month. I know it's crazy. And it would generate you 20, 30 appointments a day. So that's, that's what it is. So if you're sitting, listen, if anybody's sitting on 10,000 leads, if you're sitting on a database of 10,000, talk to me, talk to Dominic. We'll, well, and, we'll and, help and you convert. If, if you don't mind me adding to that, if you're not sitting on a list of 10,000 leads, talk to Chris because he'll show you how to get them. I think people exactly. would be, uh, when people are scared about where technology is going, they're right. We can yes. be tracked everywhere. Our cell phone, our emails, uh, which YouTube video you watched before they watched your YouTube video, all of that is trackable data. 100%. It's crazy. everything. Yeah. Anyways, Chris, they I know, know you have another than, meeting. Then they, they you know yourself. I know yeah. you have another meeting. I'll let you go. Uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, it's, no uh, if people want to reach Chris, just email him, chris at crmgenius.ca. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Chris. Take care, brother. Cheers. Okay, bye-bye. Well, well, well. Thanks, Chris, for joining me here today to talk about these ideas, issues, you know, the ways to put these these things in place. I like how you keep it simple because um, it, it's easy for people to over-talk technology, but really it's just a tool. It's just a bundle of tools. So a couple of high points that I've picked up from our, our interview today, um, you're an expert at Zapier or Zapier, as some people say it. And if you're not familiar with Zapier, folks, it is a, uh, a little recipe building tool that says, if this happens, then make this other thing happen. So let me give you an example. If the temperature drops uh, to below 70 degrees, wouldn't I love to live there? If the temperature drops below 70 degrees, then turn on the air conditioner. It's a, That's a very simple uh, system. If I take a picture and save it to a certain folder, then upload it to this other folder. If somebody goes to our website and does this thing, then make it do the other thing. And what Zapier is really good at doing is making two programs that don't normally talk to each other, talk to each other. And even if they do talk to each other and they're, they're not doing it right, then Chris knows the secret backdoor to make that happen. Um, we talked about automation and technology. We talked about better, faster tracking customer communications. And look, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on a new ERP system. You just need to get started with software. And the reason for that is to help track things. The reason for that is so you have data. I know it's going to be hard. It's hard for me to put new software in place because I got to remember to use it. I have to train people on how to do it, et cetera. But once you get through that, once you break through that level, then you break through with your company and you start to move forward so that you have a predictable business. So you have predictable cash flow. So that you get to the place you want. Anyways, Chris can help with all those things. And remember, you have a computer right there in your hand when you have your phone in your hand. It's a full computer, faster than the first computer you ever bought. Your phone is a tool. Your guys in the field have it. Your installers have it. Your demolition crew has it. Your subcontractors have it. Let's get them using that tool for the benefit of our company. That's your company. Anyways, Chris, thank you very much for being part of the show. I appreciate it. Um, Folks, I need you to leave a review for the show. I need you to find a place to do that, whether you listen on iTunes or Google Play. But please go and leave a review for the show. Leave a five-star if you feel like leaving a five-star. If you feel like leaving a four-star, three-star, two-star, or one-star, then don't leave a review. Just leave a five and then contact me and say, Dom, I was going to leave you a five, but I but I, 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 didn't want to. I left you a five, but I'm going to leave you a personal voicemail so that you know I get five-star reviews. That sounds cheesy, doesn't it? But I need them. And the reason I need them is because it tells other people that this show is valuable. It tells other people who've never heard of the show that finding guests like Chris Manesis is valuable and has helped you move your company forward. So if you can do that for me, it would be a big, big favor and I would appreciate it. All right, folks, let's get ready for Storytime with Dom. It's the next piece of the episode. Now, Storytime with Dom is changing. It's either going to be Storytime with Dom or Questions and Answers with Dom. You'll hear more about that as we go forward. Thanks, folks. Thanks for checking in. Chris, thank you for being on the show. And we'll talk to you all soon or we'll see you in the next portion of the episode. Thanks. Hi, today's question comes to us via an email uh, sent by uh, M. South. I'm going to use his last name, but not his first name, M. South. Hey, Dom, I need a little bit of advice. This is my first year owning my company, and I'm seeing a really steep drop-off 
in incoming leads and jobs. Where can I find jobs, especially for wintertime work, besides word of mouth referrals and Angie's List leads? Thanks in advance. Okay, Mr. South uh, or M. South, thank you very much for your question. I'll answer it here. Well, hey, Mr. South, thank you very much for your question. Advice on uh, for a new business owner and really any business owner. Uh, he's seen a drop off in leads. You know, things are tailing off and he's worried. There's no more business coming in. If you're in that situation, hang on to your hats. I love marketing questions. They are fantastic. You know why? Because it's so easy to turn marketing around. And the reason for that is your competition. Yeah, it's amazing to think that, right? Uh, the reason marketing is easy when you start thinking about your competition is because your competition sucks at marketing. So the bar is set very low. It just is. It just is. As that makes it easy, even if you're bad at marketing, you're going to be better than the guys that don't market at all. See what I mean? Like you're trying at least. So here's how to put things in place successfully as a contractor for the win. I've got the answer for you, Mr. South, broken down into five parts, five steps. Uh, and the final step is broken into two subsections where we're going to break it down for residential answers and commercial answers. And then I've got an inspiring finish with a, something my mom said to me when I was a kid. How is that? Here's the answer. So um, I need to pick up my leads is basically, you know, and beyond word of mouth referrals and Angie's list. By the way, the the joke that business coaches tell when business coaches are out having an old fashioned or something like that is, uh, do you know what you call it when a client is relying on word of mouth and referrals for their business? That's called hope and a prayer marketing. And the reason for that is because you can't you can't do anything. I mean, it's important to have word of mouth and referrals. I'm not taking away from that in the least. What I am saying, though, is I can't make more referrals happen. I can't make more word of mouth happen. Sure, if we come through Thanksgiving or Christmas or a, a Labor Day long weekend, more people are talking. But what am I just hoping they're talking about me? Hoping that one of their neighbors says to the other guy, hey, uh, really would like to put a pool in my backyard or gee, I need new kitchen cabinets. Like you're just hoping you're not actually directing traffic towards you. So we need much more proactive ways of doing things. And that's what I'm going to talk about here. The very first thing I want you to know is, and write this down. Number one, target is everything. Who you're going to go after is everything. See, I want you to be intentional about who you go after. This is part of the simple system we talk about in coaching. Understand your perfect customer, really know them really, really well. There's a saying, you know, and I got to keep saying this. I stole this line from somebody else and I can't find the quote anywhere, but it certainly isn't mine. So I'm not going to take the credit for it. But here's how the line goes. When I understand my customer's problem better than they do, they immediately know that I'm the guy with the answer. So if you do kitchen cabinets, if you do framing, if you do pools, if you do renovations and you're able to repeat back the problems and the fears and the frustrations that that person is feeling, they're automatically going to know that you're the right person. So in order to understand that person, and I'm going to go on the residential side for this answer, commercial guys, hang on a sec. On the residential side, you have to know what neighborhood they live in and what neighborhood they don't. I'm sure you guys have heard the story about George before. George is a house painter, uh, but he was aiming at the wrong neighborhoods. And so he was aiming for neighborhoods with the kind of house he lived in, which is a smaller bungalow style home. And they just weren't very big paint jobs. And so guess what we did in coaching? We aimed at nicer neighborhoods. And it completely changed his business. He's well into the million dollar range now. When we started, I don't have my notes, but he was like, he's under 300 grand, probably under 200 grand when we first started, just by getting focused on the marketing and going after great neighborhoods to the point that where he used to sell a home painting job for two grand, he now goes to bigger homes where the subcontract price just for power washing the home and the pool deck is two grand. And he makes money on that from the sub. It's a completely different animal, but you have to understand who's your perfect customer, where they are, where they live, what their problems are and how you solve it. That's number one. Number two is mindset. Number two is gentlemen, what we call the four inch problem. You, my friend have a four inch problem. And I know some of you are giggling and laughing, but it's a family show. So keep it clean. Okay. What I mean is the space between your ears. It's about four inches, depending on who you are. It's about four inches. That's the problem. Mindset has been my problem, is might be your problem. But if it whether it is or isn't, you've got to face up to it. <clears throat> and I want you to change the way you look at the world. I want you to change your philosophy and say this out loud to yourself. I'm a businessman or a businesswoman who just happens to run a contracting business. 
I'm a businessman who just happens to be a renovator. I'm a businessman who happens to build kitchen cabinets. I'm a businessman who happens to do hardscaping or site prep, whatever your trade is. It changes your mindset. It changes how you see the world, how problems get dealt with as, as they come across your desk, right? I'm a, I'm a business person who happens to be a fencing contractor. It's different. Now, as a business person, uh, Mr. Self has already recognized he has a marketing problem. And so now you got to say, I'm a business person who just happens to be a, I'm not going to say his trade. Um, and now I'm a marketer. If you spend all of your time marketing, you're going to have more clients than you ever imagined. Right now, for those of you dreaming, oh, I wish I had a full-time marketing person, but we're not very busy, so we can't afford it. Did you catch that? You get to be the marketing person right now. And I know it's tough. I know it's hard getting used to, but it's worth it. Remember what I said? Most of your competitors don't market at all. And so you can crush them very, very easily. So the next thing I want you to do is put a plan together on paper. Let's catch ourselves up. Number one is target is everything. Number two, mindset. I am a business person who just happens to be a contractor. Number three, put a plan together on paper. So how are you going to market to these perfect customers? Whatever it is. And by the way, and I'm going to make this point number four, the internet is not everything. You don't have to do Google pay-per-click. You don't have to be a Facebook ads expert. Let's just agree. You're never going to be. I'm never going to be an, a Facebook ads expert. I'm going to hire that. Somebody else can be better at that and I'll manage them. But the internet is not the only way to go get leads, regardless of what people say. It's kind of cowardly to go cringe behind a computer keyboard and go, I'm just going to get leads to come in online. I, want to, I don't want to talk to any humans. Come on. You're proud of the work you do. You do great quality work. Get out there and tell the world and the world will come to find you. And so we can use traditional marketing methods, right? The traditional marketing methods, old-fashioned marketing still works. Old-fashioned marketing, like, uh, let's go, let's do the split right now. That was number five, by the way. Old-fashioned marketing still works. Let's catch us up. Number one, target is everything. Number two, mindset. I'm a business person who just happens to be a contractor. Number three, put a plan together on paper. Number four, the internet isn't everything. Number five, old-fashioned marketing still works. So now let's do our breakdown. Those of you who are in commercial contracting, commercial construction, welcome back. Uh, so let's let's start with the residential side first. Once you've identified the neighborhood, put up signage, lots of signage. Put out door flyers. Now, if all you can do is afford to print the door flyers, then you go knock on the doors or put the door hangers on yourself. That silence was intentional. You got to do it yourself. You've got to go get those jobs. Go talk to some people in the neighborhood. Make some friends, right? Postcards. Postcards work. That's why realtors send them all the time. When you see a, a realtor always hitting you with, with direct mail, hey, we just listed this house. Hey, we just sold this house. That's called farming an area. You don't know it, but you're the perfect client for that realtor because of where your home is. You can do the same thing for whatever your trade is, whether you do blinds, whether you do pools, whether you do kitchen cabinets, whether you do renovations, right? Um there is some use for a website called nextdoor.com. Uh, it's you know po popular in some cities, not so popular in others. It tends to be a smaller job size, so be very careful with that. Right? I know that's an internet thing, but it's getting out there and understanding the community, listening to people, understanding their problems. That's where they're going to complain about their painter. That's where they're going to complain about the guy that just re, uh, refinished their driveway. That's where they're going to complain about the retaining wall. It's going to tell you how the people in your neighborhood talk about the tradespeople and show you how to be a step above, right? Um, talk to others who touch your trade. So go talk to other people who touch your trade. Here's what I mean. If you do plumbing, go talk to guys that do renovations. You're going to get some subcontract work. You're going to get some referral work. You're going to have to talk to lots of them to get it, but that's the job right now. Mr. South, you need work. Let's go find work, right? If you happen to do cabinets, then go talk, talk to other people that your clients will be talking to when they start to think about cabinets, like carpet stores, as an example. Go talk to your local carpet and tile stores. Go talk to the appliance place. And you know what you're going to hear from the sales manager or the owner of those shops? Well, people don't really come in here asking us about cabinets. Right. But when they do, I'd like you to refer them to me and just build a relationship with the owner or the manager of that store. And that's how these things start. Okay. Let's change gears and talk to the commercial guys for a second. Commercial, listen, it's really the same. You still have to start with Target. So Target, the best builders, the best GCs, the best developers, the best property managers. And here's one you maybe never thought of, the best 
franchises in your area. I'll get to that in a second. Franchises. What the heck is Rubino talking about? What's in his coffee? Franchises? Yeah. All right. So builders, builders, GCs, developers, franchisors, and property managers, I want you to go hit them on LinkedIn. Just make a LinkedIn connection with them. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, go get a LinkedIn account. That was it. Go get a LinkedIn account. Hit them on LinkedIn. Then I want you to send them a direct mail piece that says, hi, my name's Mr. South. I do this kind of trade and I'd be interested in doing work for you. Have you got anything? When can we talk? When can we go for lunch? So think about this as the LinkedIn and lunch program. You're going to go take these guys for coffee. You're going to go stop by. You're going to go knock on doors. You're going to go to homes that are under construction and go, or buildings that are under construction in this case, and talk to the person on site. You got to get out there. And here's the statement that my mom told me. I was a little kid. If you make a full-time job out of finding a job, you'll find a job. If you make a full-time job out of going to find more work, you'll find work. And so, Mr. South, the business is out there waiting to be had. There's a lot of contractors who don't listen to shows like this, who have no idea what they're doing, have their head up their shoe, and you're going to eat their lunch. All you got to do is get out there and market. All right, folks, thanks for checking in. Listen, if you like this stuff, if you want to learn how to grow your business, but customize to how your business is and who you are as a person, come find out more about coaching at 10xbuilt.com. So that's 10xblt.com. Read the website. If that interests you, apply. All it starts with is a simple conversation. Love to see you in the program. All of this stuff that we talked about here is laid out in a much more organized fashion because we take you through it in a, in a simple system for ourselves as well. Thanks for checking in, folks. I appreciate having you as a listener. We'll talk to you soon.